From lies we learn in history class to lies told by politicians, here are the greatest lies told in history. But first, quick shout out goes to John Wilson for leaving us this comment on our most wanted female fugitives video. We asked you guys if you ever found yourself dating a female fugitive that you thought was innocent, and thanks for sharing us your story. Let us know in the comments section what you think is the biggest lie in history, and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 10. The Piltdown Man In 1912, a man named Charles Dawson claims to have discovered the missing link when he'd uncovered a skeleton in Piltdown of Eastern Sussex, United Kingdom. He then made some further discoveries of some primitive tools, a jawbone, and some skull fragments. Dawson hypothesized that the remains came from 500,000 years ago and were primitive human ancestors with a large head. What he forgot to leave out about the story was that it was a complete hoax. Since he used a human skull with the jawbones of an ape, it seemed rather believable that this could have been some kind of human-ape hybrid. The hoax wasn't even uncovered until 45 years later and took a few scientists to confirm that it was false. It makes you wonder though, what other things could we have been taught in school that turned out to be false too? Number 9. The Monica Lewinsky Aftermath Bill Clinton lied under oath that he, quote, did not have sexual relations with Monica Lewinsky. We might be familiar with some of the secrets about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky that came out, but maybe you didn't know that some of the items involved were on sale. Some lingerie can get pretty expensive as it is, but if it was involved with a presidential scandal, it could be considered a piece of history and sold for a large amount of dough. As a part of a 33-piece collection from the scandal that was used as evidence of the affair, it sold for about $12,000. Monica sold it herself and said she expected to get more like $50,000 for the collection. This black nightgown was among some of the items, but it also included the letters exchanged between the two. How do you guys think Hillary Clinton reacted to all this? Number 8. The Sata Ferns Gold Tiara This one proves that even fancy museums like the Louvre in Paris can be victims of cruel hoaxes. In 1896, the historians in Paris purchased a golden tiara that they believe belonged to a Scythian king named Sata Ferns. The people who found it claimed it was a gift from a Greek colony from the Black Sea and said that it was found near Odessa. It was supposed to have dated back to the 3rd century BC. After it was exhibited, many experts challenged its authenticity and they found quite a few stylistic problems with the design. The remarkable preservation of this tiara should have raised some red flags. A goldsmith from Ukraine later admitted to making the crown and claimed that he was making it for a friend to give as a gift to a friend who was an archaeologist. It managed to sell though for 200,000 francs. The Louvre still holds on to the fake crown, but it's kept in storage and no longer on display. Kinda embarrassing. Number 7. The Pearl Harbor Sneak Attack Could our government have had previous knowledge of Pearl Harbor and allowed the attack to happen? There was even a newspaper that came out of the Hawaii Tribune Herald that stated Japan may strike over the weekend. Although they were about a week off, it's still a striking coincidence that they could have predicted something that everyone believed was a surprise attack. Many argue that America won to get into battle with Germany and that if Japan struck first, it would give us a good reason to declare war on their ally. Many writers and journalists claim that this is exactly the case and we had already cracked the Japanese coats. FDR also ignored many hints that the Japanese military was getting ready for the bombardment of Pearl Harbor. Another strange coincidence was that the US aircraft carriers were not at Pearl Harbor that day of the attack. Some claim that this was done with previous knowledge that their most viable naval boats would be spared during the strike. There were also Japanese midget submarines washing up on shore well before the aerial assault took place. Although most hatred was towards Japan after the attack, the British needed our help to keep the Nazis out. Only a horrific attack from one of Germany's allies would have allowed us to enter the war. Number 6. Horsing Around you might be familiar with the legend of the Trojan horse mentioned in Homer's Iliad and even with the film Brad Pitt titled Troy. However, this city truly does exist and is located in northwestern Turkey. The Greeks played one of the best pranks in history and this was not just a prank bro but one of the best cases of deception in military history. Some of the remains of this legendary setting are still intact such as the portions of this wall. However, due to its strategic location, it's also been urbanized by other civilizations such as the Romans. The remarkable city was founded in 3500 BC and abandoned in 500 AD. In Greek mythology, a woman named Helen of Troy lived here who was rumored to be one of the most beautiful women in all the world. The war broke out when Helen, who was married to the king of Sparta, was abducted by the prince of Troy named Paris. After a long 10-year siege of the city Troy, the Greek army came up with a plot to get inside the walls by constructing a large wooden horse as a peace offering. Little did the Trojans know that inside the horse were Greek soldiers so be careful of the Greeks offering gifts. Number 5. 
slaves built the pyramids. The largest and oldest of any pyramid in the world is the Great Pyramid of Egypt, and it's the only standing ancient wonder of the world that is still remarkably in good condition. Many would argue that the pyramids were built by slaves, but that's certainly not the case, according to some archaeological discoveries. Not only is this the most well-known pyramid in Egypt, but it was built during the Old Kingdom by Pharaoh Khufu. Graves were uncovered of the workers, which showed that they were honored for their labor. They were typically from low-class families in the north and the south, and feasted on game meat, cattle, sheep, and beer. Or were they really built by aliens and that was a lie too? Who knows? Number 4. Circus of Lies Who wouldn't go pay to see Real Mermaid? In the mid-19th century, P.T. Barnum displayed this mummy at their sideshows and claimed that it was actually caught near the islands of Fiji in the South Pacific. The tons of publicity for this creature that came out for this mermaid made many people extremely curious of what it could have possibly been. Despite making false claims that someone named Dr. Griffin from England claimed that it was real, no one really seemed to notice for quite some time that these were complete lies. The mermaid was fake and P.T. Barnum knew it the whole time. The Fiji mermaid was made from the torso of a monkey with the tail of a fish. He didn't really care that it wasn't real, but only that people would pay to see it. Some people believe that the mermaid was actually destroyed when P.T. Barnum's museum was set on fire in retaliation for his hoaxes. Number 3. The Nutritional Pyramid Ever since you've been growing up, you probably remember seeing this nutritional pyramid which has been telling you to consume large amounts of carbohydrates. It's supposed to be a guideline to what you're supposed to eat each day. This includes 6 to 11 servings of carbs, 2 to 4 servings of fruits, 3 to 5 servings of veggies, 2 to 3 servings of milk and dairy, and sparingly use oils and fats. They might as well go ahead and flip this whole thing upside down now because it almost seems like it's one giant lie. Especially if you follow the keto diet. Carbohydrates are known to cause a rush of insulin, making people gain weight and even diabetes if you're not careful. It either doesn't seem to be working or no one's following it correctly because roughly one third of the US is considered to be at least overweight if not obese. Telling someone to avoid fatty foods can seriously harm someone's health. Some believe that there are political motives to lie to people and to help keep farmers growing corn or grain from losing their jobs. Number 2. The Kinderhook Plates Hoax The Kinderhook's plates were a set of six different plates of brass with a bizarre form of writing that was claimed to have been discovered on an Indian mound near Kinderhook, Illinois. During this time, the Mormon religion was becoming more and more popular and a few tricksters want to see if they can prove that Joseph Smith was making things up. Wilbur Fugate created these plates on his own and said he discovered them. The Mormons looked to their prophet to see if Joseph could translate what was engraved on the plates. He used his seer stone to make the revelation and Joseph claimed that they were actually in relation to the history of a person who was a descendant of him through the loins of Pharaoh King of Egypt. His seer stones shouldn't have actually worked this time because the whole thing was fake. One of the plates that were being kept at the Chicago Historical Society were scientifically examined, which proved that it was actually a 19th century creation. It clearly wasn't ancient by any means, which basically proves that Joseph Smith was lying. The Mormons will claim that he actually never translated from these stones, but there's actually been other cases where he was given ancient Greek writing and thought it was actually ancient Egyptian. And number one, weapons of mass destruction? If Bill Clinton got impeached for lying about a personal matter, what should happen to George Bush for lying about weapons of mass destruction? According to a recent investigation, George Bush and officials knew ahead of time that war would cause massive instability and even a societal collapse, but shows to do it anyways. In October of 2002, Bush claimed that there was a massive stockpile of biological weapons, but it was noted by CIA director George Tenet that this massive stockpile didn't exist and it was just made up. Bush then declared not too long after that he doesn't really know whether or not Iraq had a nuclear weapon or not. Dick Cheney also claimed that the conspirator Mohammed Atta met with an Iraqi intelligence officer, but the FBI and CIA claimed that this meeting never took place. And what about the mustard gas that Saddam was using apparently? CIA files prove that America helped provide it to be used against Iran. Just remember, they're only terrorists if they're not on our team. What else do you think Bush lied about? Let us know in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video.